Welcome to the launch of the Martin Mac 1 and thank you for taking the time to join us today. We are extremely excited to show you what we've been working on, so let's get started. This is the Mac 1, a completely new moving edge in Martin's Mac range. Mac 1 is the most compact and lightweight fixture in its class, featuring a narrow high-intensity beam usually only seen in bigger and heavier fixtures. When zooming out, it transforms into a beautiful soft-edge washlight with an elegant Fresnel lens. The lens is complemented with unique backlight effect, giving additional looks and effects. Whether you use it as a compact light that fits literally everywhere, or as part of a bigger look with hundreds in a matrix or creative layout, the Mac 1 will amaze you with its beautiful wash, punchy beam and appealing backlight effect. Let's take a closer look and explore what makes the Mac 1 such a unique fixture. As you can see, the fixture is extremely compact, thereby allowing for discrete placement on stage or anywhere in the rig. With a weight of just 4 kilograms or 9 pounds, this facilitates easy handling and reduced environmental impact during transport. When using the fixture in larger quantities, they can be placed really closely together. At the heart of the fixture, you find a single custom LED composed of red, green, blue and lime, giving a beautiful spectrum of light with impressive CRI, TM30 and TLCI metrics. The Fresnel lens in the front projects a beautiful soft edge wash with zero color artifacts. For an even softer edge, the fixture comes with a soft lens accessory included in the box, which snaps onto the fixture without requiring any tools. Mounting points for third-party beam control accessories, such as top hats and concentric rings, are also provided. Like any Martin Mac fixture, the Mac 1 is fully calibrated in our factory for optimal fixture-to-fixture -fixture consistency and accurate calibrated coil temperature control from the lighting console. An additional tint or plus minus green channel makes it easy to adjust the white balance without affecting the color temperature. When you pull the zoom too narrow, the Mac 1 turns into a punchy beam fixture with high intensity and close to zero stray light. The low weight and advanced motor control enable very fast movements and the impressive acceleration creates the most snappy movements. The fast and responsive movements continue in the zoom system, featuring a radical zoom pulse effect. A unique backlight effect brings the Fresnel lens to life with a wide variety of looks. Further explore the creative possibilities by combining the backlight with the main beam, or by using the zoom system to alter the appearance of the backlight. The 24 LEDs in the backlight can obviously be controlled individually using the MX, the more than 200 built-in effects macros, or video map through the P3 and the P3 Mix channel. The base of the Mac 1 is extremely small, but features all the essentials. Power in and through, the Mix in and through, and network in and through, supporting ArtNet, Streaming ACN, and Martin P3. The network ports are obviously fitted with Martin's failsafe bypass technology so that a single fixture being powered down does not take down the rest of your network. Just like on the bigger Mac fixtures, the display is battery powered, allowing for setup and configuration before powering up the rig. On the bottom you'll find a single Omega clamp attachment point and two threaded holes. Martin also offers a 4-bar accessory to easily deploy the fixture in large quantities. Daisy chain cables can be integrated nicely onto the 4-bar and two fully assembled 4-bars fit into the same flight case as 8 single fixtures. The grid mount ring accessory can be fitted onto the base of the fixture and allows fixtures to be combined in lines or matrices using a toolless interlock system. This system is fully compatible with the Martin Viatomic Bolt and Viatomic Dot fixtures, allowing creative pots of light to be created with minimal effort. 
And as the Mac One is extremely lightweight, you can create radical designs without worrying about the rigging weight. So there you have it, the Martin Mac One. An extremely compact and lightweight fixture, providing snappy beams, a beautiful wash and an additional layer of lens backlight looks. Whether you use it as a compact wash light that fits truly everywhere, or as part of a bigger look with hundreds of fixtures in a matrix or creative layout, the Mac One will amaze you. Hello and welcome again. We hope this first part of the, de of the uh, launch gives you a good introduction of what the Martin Mac 1 is all about. Right now, we would like to open up for questions. So please use the Q&A function in Zoom to type in your questions. And my colleague, Peter, will uh, sort them out for me and make sure that I answer as many questions as we can possibly do today. Uh, so please type, uh, start typing your questions. For those who are looking forward to see the product in real life, Later this week, the product will be shown at the LDI trade show in Las Vegas. So there you can see the product with your own eyes if you happen to be around. Peter, have any questions come in? Yes, indeed. So we actually have questions starting to come up here. Great. Uh, they are rolling in actually here. So um, first here, uh, how much power does it take? So the LED in the middle is a 120 watt custom red, green, blue lime LED. The total fixture power is uh, around 160 watt. Uh, so very low power consumption means you can daisy chain a lot of fixtures on a single power line indeed. Okay. Um, then are these fixtures available for purchase now? Yes, they are available for purchase from uh, Martin directly or from our uh, regional distributors around the globe. Uh, the factory is actually starting production next week. Uh, we have the first ones being produced next week. So from early January, uh, the first ones will be available in our warehouses. Uh, so yeah, we're getting uh, ramped up and it will very soon be in your hands. Okay, then there's another one here. Uh, what is the output of the fixture? So the output, uh, it comes down to two things. You either have the luminous flux. So this fixture has an output of 2,400 lumen. Uh, to put that in perspective, it's the output that a product like the Mac 101 used to have. It's a, a little bit above a product like the Martin Rush MH6, or more comparable as well, is around two thirds of the power of the original Mac Ara, the non-XB version. So it's our smallest product with our smallest output, but still very impressive output for a small fixture. But then it actually really shines as a beam as well, because when you pull the zoom to a narrow, you get a beam of around 300,000 candela. So that's actually the beam intensity. If you look at other fixtures in our portfolio that you normally see from bigger seven times 40 watt fixtures. So in beam, it's highly efficient and quite yeah, beating the beam intensity of uh, fixtures that are actually sitting a class above this one. So very efficient on the narrow beam indeed. Yeah. Uh, then there's one here. This is more in regards to the uh, control. Yeah. What are the DMX channel options? Yes, so the fixture has uh, four modes. The first one is the compact mode at 20 channels. The second one is the basic mode at 36. The basic mode gives you control over the backlight effect, uh, the effects macros and the P3 mix channels. And then we have the extended mode at 108 channels that gives you 24 times RGB on top of basic for the backlight effect as well. So that's the first three modes. We also have a compact direct mode that's a special mode specifically for theater because in that mode you have direct control over the red, green, blue, and lime emitters if you prefer the color mixing to be done by the desk instead of uh, the fixture itself figuring out the optimal balance. So four modes, 20, 36, 108, and 20 for the compact direct. Uh, the modes are actually one-to-one -one comparable with the Mac RXIP. So if you want to have a quick look, just look at the Mac RXIP. It's a one-on-one -on -one copy of that fixture with some minor differences. Um, then there's something about the power connection. Is it a true one power connection? Yes, it's a, it's a new trick, true one uh, for power. And of course, there is a daisy chain because as mentioned, the power consumption is really low. So you can go 
really crazy on the daisy chaining with this little bad beast. Yeah. Uh, then we had one uh, DMX challenge. We went around that already. Yeah. Um, is this a moving head version of the video Atomic Bolt? Uh, it has some uh, similarities to the video Atomic Bolt. Uh, the video Atomic Bolt had a similar uh, Fresnel design. Of course, that fixture does not have a uh, zoom function. But yes, you could see it as a moving uh, version of the Bolt, despite this having quite a few different features. It zooms down to four degrees, so a much more uh, punchy beam than the Bolt, where the Bolt is more a blinder slash strobe fixture, but they kind of work really nice together as well, because as you saw in the first part of our launch, the Mac one fits in a grid mount frame where you can mix it with a bolt in a, in a mixed matrix. So you can combine them together into a wall or lines of fixtures indeed. Okay, uh, then I have another question here. What are the pan and tilt speed ranges? So there's also a related question also about how fast it is on, on pan and tilt. Yeah, so as you might have seen in the video, uh, just to be clear, in the video, the movements you see were not uh, speeded up in the post edit. It was the actual speeds. So it is by far the, the fastest uh, moving head from Martin that we've ever done. Uh, even compared to some uh, something like a Mac 101, it beats it uh, massively. Uh, also the zoom uh, is 0.3 seconds to get from narrow to wide, so really snappy. Uh, zoom pulse effects are possible as well. Uh, we have not yet measured the final, final speeds with the final firmware, which we'll, of course, do and put in the GDTF file if you want to know the exact timings of pan and tilt. But rest assured, it's, it's the fastest uh, Mac in the range. Then uh, something coming to the, uh, yeah, the control thing. So can I have DMX control of movement and main beam at the same time as the backlight is controlled from P3? Yes, yes, yeah, that's really, really good question. So absolutely, if you feed ArtNet or streaming ACN into the P3 controller, and then from the P3 controller, use a P3 network to this fixture, you can indeed control movements, zoom, main beam, backlight from the console, and then use video on the main beam or the ARA. So for both the middle LED and the LEDs around, you can, from the console, decide, am I controlling the colors? or is this coming from video via the P3 controller? So you really get the best of both worlds. If you do console P3 fixture, then you really do video and uh, console control in a hybrid uh, way, uh, as, as with many other fixtures. So definitely check that one out. Okay. Um, what about fan noise? Fan noise. Uh, I actually got the final uh, noise measurement just in today. Uh, so it's uh, 26 dB in regulated mode and 23 dB in the ultra low uh, theater mode. Uh, looking at the other fixtures, it's our most quiet fixture so far was products like the Encore or the Mac Ara PXL. This one still sits uh, around six dBs below the Mac Ara PXL, so it's barely any noise. Uh, there's actually only fans in the head, no fans in the base, it's a tiny base, but by far the most quiet fixture. So not only for those big matrixes, it's a great fixture, but also for theater use, uh, TV studios, low ceiling heights, anything close to people, it's a damn quiet fixture. Um, then there's a couple of questions about the price point where it's kind of like sitting. Uh, is it like a high-end light or, or close to watch the Rush series? Yeah, so the, the pricing, of course, varies per region, different currencies and all of that. So I won't go into specific pricing, but just to give you an idea, this is the smallest Mac, obviously also the most affordable Mac. So quite, in terms of pricing, it sits quite far below the Mac Ara XB, which is the cheapest in the Mac range today. So uh, yeah, it's really uh, on, yeah, at, at the low end of the, of the Martin Mac range, so quite a bit below the Mac Ara XB, just to give you a reference. But definitely reach out to your local Martin salesperson or Martin distributor, and they have the price already available if you want the full details. Okay, uh, then there's a question about the, uh, the the power and DMX cables. Is that something we sell, or do we, you know, send people to third party for? Okay. No, so yeah, we don't. Do, we do sell power cables, uh, indeed, but most of the other cables, like uh, the DMX or the network ones, we do not sell. However, when you use the fixture on the four bar, there is a recommended length, so you can route the cables nicely on the four bar. And also when you use the cable in the grid mount ring system, there's a preferred cable length. So you have a really nice clean routing with minimal uh, slack on the cables. 
So the length of that ideal cable for four bar and grid mount will be on our website. So if you use a fixture on four bar or grid mount, definitely check out the Martin website for the recommended length to have a clean routing uh, in those two use cases. Uh, there's a question regarding, I think maybe we already talked a bit about the size of the fixture, but does it compare more to like our XP, XIP or an Air 150? No, it's smaller than everything you mentioned, Peter. Yeah. Uh, I do not have an Aura XB next to it, but if you look on the website right now, there's actually a picture on the website of the Mac 1 next to the Mac Aura XB. Just for my memory, the Mac Aura XB is about this high. So it's about uh, five centimeters or two inches for our US colleagues, uh, lower than the Mac Aura XB. So it is really the smallest one. And even compared to an Aero 150, uh, it's also sitting quite a bit below the era 150, which is about here. So it's, it is the smallest one of all of them, yes. Yeah. Um, does the fixture ship in a rubber boot? So I think maybe, yeah, some questions also about the, oh, the uh, package yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and how it's shipping. Yeah. yeah, so you can buy the fixture in two options. We have the rubber flight case SIP. So that's a dual SIP, fits two fixtures. If you buy the fixture in the SIP, you can either also buy the flight case from us or make your own flight case, which of course, if you get the SIP from us, is very easy to do. It's just a square wooden box, really. Uh, but you can also buy more for install work, obviously, the uh, product in without the rubber flight case SIP, just in cardboard. And what's new is something we are introducing with the Mac 1. We're no longer putting any foam around the fixture in the cardboard box. So we're now doing a cardboard Pulp packaging, fully recycled material, can also be recycled afterwards. So if you buy it in cardboard, there's no foam or plastic involved in the packaging. This is something we're starting with the Mac 1, and we will roll out to more uh, Martin products uh, really soon. So we're also thinking about the environment by being smarter about the packaging there. Yeah, then there's something uh, about outdoor rating. So is it IP65? No, so this fixture, unlike the Mac Ara XIP, which we launched just last year. This fixture is not rated for outdoor use in the rain. Uh, we did uh, strongly consider to make it outdoor rated, but it quickly grew in terms of size and weight, which then uh, tremendously affected the speed of this product. And as we really want to keep this fixture lightweight, compact and fast, we concluded if we make it outdoor, it's gonna lose all of that unique appeal. So we decided not to go ahead and, and keep sticking uh, to the concept we had with a really small, really fast, really lightweight fixture. So in terms of the uh, the zoom range, can you maybe recap on the zoom from narrow to Yes, wide -wide? so in beam angle, so uh, half peak, it's from four degrees to 21 in uh, field angle, so one tenth peak, it goes from six to uh, 27. What you also get with a fixture, as you saw uh, me explain earlier as well, is you get a soft lens, including the box. When you click on the soft lens, the zoom range, of course, expands further. Uh, so you get a wider uh, wash out of the fixture as well. And then, uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions on the uh, on the pen and tilt. Is it infinite or like 360 degrees on pen and tilt? No, it's not. Uh, it's not infinite pan and tilt. Uh, it's um, 540 on the pan and 240 on the tilt. So a really good uh, pan tilt range. We decided not to make it infinite. Uh, but on the pan and tilt, it also does have pan tilt limits. So if you're placing it in a really compact, tight space and you want to limit the movements, we have pan and tilt so it doesn't start hitting things. Uh, so we do have that function as well, despite the fixture being uh, small. Uh, then there's a question more family related. Is there coming more products in the Mac 1 family or is this like a one-off? Uh, there's a lot of stuff in my head. Uh, and of course, we're looking at other members of this family, but nothing has really been decided. But we, of course, now that we made such a compact fixture, we are looking at potential other products as well. Uh, yes. And as you, as it's probably not a surprise for anybody, Martin is always working on new uh, fixtures. So yes, there will always be something coming. Yes. How long does the battery last for the display? The battery for the display, it's the same as we use in other Mac products. It's between 18 months and two years uh, and before the battery runs out under typical usage uh, conditions. And of course, that battery can be replaced uh, by simply opening the bottom lid of the product. And then a related question is more about the menu structure. Does that match the structure we have in the XIP? Yes, it's the menu structure is the same as all the other Macs. It's the same layout, same everything. So anybody who's worked with any Martin moving head before will immediately feel familiar. It's the same across 
uh, other products like a Macara XIP or a Macara uh, PXL. Uh, of course, not Macara XB, which had the tiny display on the back of the head. So it's in line with the modern Macs. The video showcased a fall bar. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that and does it fit into the uh, flight case? Yes. So uh, we do offer a four bar because this fixture is such a lightweight, uh, compact fixture. It's really easy on a four bar. It's still very manageable. So the four bar obviously fits four fixtures. Uh, it fits it at 30 centimeter intervals or uh, about one foot intervals. The nice thing on the four bar is the cables. There's a cable tray on the four bar so you can keep the daisy chain cables nicely tucked away on the four bar and leave them on. The four bar with cables, daisy chain cables attached, fits inside the same flight case. So our flight case either fits two fully assembled four bars or eight single fixtures. And then the four bar for rigging, it has uh, one clamp in the middle that can't be moved and two clamps that can slide to avoid diagonal bracing in the truss. So you can always hang it where you want just by moving those two clamps. The four bar also has a clip system. So if you do a continuous line of four bars, they slide into each other. So they're perfectly aligned in each direction and also angled perfectly. So if you do like 16 fixtures in a line, the four bars go into each other. Really nice there as well. And the last thing on the four bar, the four bar also has integrated feet. So if you're putting this as a four bar on the floor behind the DJ, behind the drum riser, you just flip the feet open and then you have a, four, a floor mount four bar of Mac uh, one fixture. So really handy with a four bar to easily deploy it in large quantities. So instead of hanging the fixtures one by one, you're now hanging them in blocks of four and wiring between those four is already done on the bar. So it goes a lot faster if you use the four bar even obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's about REM. Does the fixture support REM? Yes, of course. Why would any modern fixture not do <laughs> REM? <laughs> True. Um, here's another one that has to do with yeah, refresh rage. Let me just see where to go. Um, so it's really like, yeah. So it's it's about are you able to adjust the uh, yes refresh rate of, of the, the LEDs? Yeah, so the default refresh rate has been, of course, chosen for all typical camera shutter rates to not cause any bending or flickering. But we do have a dedicated mix channel where you can tweak the LED frequency up and down. If you happen to see any bending with specific non-standard camera settings, there is an easy to access dedicated day mix channel just to dial up or down the LED refresh rate a little bit to get rid of any bending or flickering you may see. So we do have that exposed on the day mix layout. Then uh, there's a question regarding the uh, the ring mount accessory. Yeah. Um, is this designed to work with other margin products? And in case, which ones? Yeah, so this ring mount accessory, which kind of fits, I would love to show a bit the role in a truck to LDI right now. Uh, so it mounts on the base and then it gives the same locking points as you see on the Martin video atomic bolt. So if you have a look at that product, it's the same system. So you can actually create a line or a matrix of fixtures and that can be just a line of Mac one fixtures or matrix of Mac one or a mix of Mac one and video atomic bolt and video atomic dot fixtures in the same matrix. As you saw in the video and, and definitely check out the website to go look at the video one more time. There's a lot of different examples where we created lines of fixtures with that ring mount adapter. Uh, we've also did a wall, just a four by four matrix. And we also did a five by five matrix with some atomic bolts in the middle. So it kind of works together with all the video atomic bolt dot products as well. And of course, if we see the market really likes this idea of this grid mount solution, we will expand this system with other products that are compatible. Uh, but it's it's for you in the market to decide if you like this kind of uh, approach of uh, locking products together and quickly creating matrices or uh, creative layouts. We will more than happily give you more tools in that system. Yeah. And this uh, grid mount ring, does it fit into the bike case? Uh, we decided to make the flight case not fit the fixture with the grid mount, it would have made the flight case way much bigger than it is right now. Uh, so you would either, you would need to take them off to put in the flight case or uh, have a special flight case where the, the grid mount can stay on. The grid mounts can also travel in the spares compartment in the flight case. And if there's uh, interest from the market, we also could look into making a bigger flight case which fits the fixture with the grid mount adapters on it. It really depends what the market wants. Uh, 
we also think that maybe when it's in the grid mount, many uh, product, many will transport the system on dollies and not put it all the way back in the flight case. So we really like to hear your feedback there and, and we can definitely look at further options there. Uh, then a little bit back to the control thing. Yeah. Uh, when will the GDTF file be available? Yes, the GDTF file, uh, it's 90% done. I just need to update the uh, 3D model. So somewhere over the next uh, week, you will see the GDTF file uh, on the GTF share and also in the Martin companion app where you also automatically find all the Martin made GTF files. So a few days of patience and, and the file will be there. And of course, then any software that uses GTF, you can immediately patch a Mac one and start playing. Nice to know we will have GTF files for both the fixture, the four bar and the grid monitoring. So if you wanna go build in Vectorworks or MA3, uh, you can actually have all the building blocks as GDTF models uh, from Martin. There's a couple of more questions here coming regarding the, the output. I don't know, did you answer the, what is the, uh, the Lumen output? Yes, yeah, we didn't, we yeah. didn't answer one. Yeah. I think yeah. we had that one, yes. Um, then there was another one down here. Uh, yeah, does it have an integrated test mode? Yes, it has a, a built-in self-test mode, which you can trigger from the menu or uh, you can also trigger from Martin Companion, um, just hit like self-test and it does an, 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 an entire self-test sequence on its own, just like uh, more recent Macs have like uh, XIP, Ultra, PXL, yeah. So it's a very compact fixture. Is this the lightest Martin fixture? It is the lightest moving Martin fixture. Yes, with only 4.4 kilograms, 9.7 pounds. Uh, we do have lighter fixtures, like some of our architectural fixtures or the atomic dot, but they are not moving. So in the moving category, yes, it's the lightest and quite by far, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we are, let's see if we have more here. Uh, the four bar, I don't know if you mentioned that, but can it be hung vertically? Yes, the four bar okay. can also yes. be, be hung yeah. vertically. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because yeah. everybody, everybody loves, well, those who remember with parkans, you would, of course, hang them vertically and create all kinds of nice beam patterns. And now they can move, which parkans couldn't. Yeah. I think we are kind of coring the questions that's coming in here. Um, then there's, yeah, there's a new one here. Has the self-tapping screws usage or design change to prevent the cracking issues commonly found on a like, one-on-one head? Yes, yes, yes. Some of the engineers who worked on the Mac 101, is it 15 years ago now, are, are still here. And they, of course, have learned uh, from the, the plastic cracking. So yes, uh, we do not make the same mistakes again. Um, and given it's the same engineers here in Denmark that did this fixture, all the learnings have, of course, been taken into account. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Is the fixture start, uh, fast to start up from? Go to receiving DMX, so like the boot up time, really. The boot up time, uh, I have not really measured it myself with a chronometer, so on par with other Macs, I would say. Uh, of course, not like uh, a performance moving it with a lot of effects where all of these effects need to be initialized. So comparable to a Mac Ara PXL or a Mac Ara XIP, uh, but I'll measure it and I'll make sure I'll, I'll document it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's uh, another question regarding the flight case. So the eight unit flight case yeah. is that you know truck pack size? Yes, the flight case is standard, uh, fifty eight by one meter twenty. So it's the most standard uh, size you can have. So four next to each other or two uh, across. So standard. Yes. Yeah. So this this mounting frame, how is it attached to the uh, to the product? Yeah. So the mounting frame, as you might have seen in the video briefly. You slide it over the head and it goes with four screws down onto the base. Uh, it's a screwed connection mainly for safety. We didn't want to rely on anything else here. So it just slides on, fits on the base. Uh, and then and then you can start hanging the fixture without using any of the clamps on the base. It just locks together like an atomic bolt would with a, with a tool-less interlock system. Yeah. yeah. I think we are coming to an end with the questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, so the product page should be live. So you can go to our website at www.martin.com. Uh, there you will find the Mac 1 and all the specs, specifications, more pictures. You will also see a picture of this one next to an RAXB if you want to get some idea of the relative size. Um, and more information will be available there. Of course, feel free to reach out to your local Martin representative. 
for more questions, they can always reach out to me with any questions there might be about this product. And if I happen to see you at one of our trade shows in the near future, of course, feel free to approach me and ask me anything you want to know about the new Martin Mac one. So have any other questions come in? Uh, there was actually, yeah. Yes, okay, my, let's take one yeah. more. <laughs> so uh, is it an Omega connection to the four bar? No, uh, no. So the there is an Omega connection on the fixture. So if you just hang a fixture on its own, there's an Omega bracket there. But to the four bar, it's uh, it's two uh, bolts directly into the base of the fixture. Reason is we wanted to get the fixture really flush with the bar. We didn't want to have another Omega and more height building up. We want to keep it as low profile as possible. So that's why it is uh, bolts straight into the fixture there. Yeah, that was it. I think it's uh, it for now, yeah. Okay, cool. Then uh, we would like to thank you for taking the time to join us today and have a first look at the Martin Mac 1. We hope you really uh, like what our team here has uh, created for you. And we hope uh, this gives you, as our designers, our customers, a lot of creative possibilities with the Mac 1. So thank you once again and hope to see you soon.